Hello YouTube, RJ. Hey, a while back I created a video called Should You Buy a Hex B? And it turned out to be one of my more popular videos. But I got a lot of comments on it. And one of the things that came up over and over again was how much benefit does a hex beam give you over like a wire, a dipole, a loop, you know, a horizontal loop, something like that. So I decided to go ahead and set up a test and actually get a little empirical data pulled in to kind of give you an idea. I can tell you it makes a big difference, but uh, instead of telling you, let me show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the reverse beacon network. If you're not familiar with this, it's a system where they have receiver stations, uh, software defined radios all over the world that scan the bands, the CW portions of the bands. It listens for people to send CQ and their call sign, and it records it and puts it in a database along with the signal strength of what that receiver received it and when it received it and a lot of other information. So what I'm going to do in this test is I'm going to do this with my horizontal loop on 20 meters and we'll send out a few CQs. We'll collect who hears us, how strong they hear us, and we'll turn right around and then we'll do it with the hex beam and we'll point the hex beam a few different directions and areas where we're getting received on the loop and we'll compare them. So let me hop over to the radio and we'll fire it up and we'll see if we can uh, collect some data, put it together, make some sense out of it and give you a clear defined, here's how much a hex beam helps. Okay, here we are on the computer. I've got reverse beacon network up here and my radio is up on the other screen over here. You can see reverse beacon network. Uh, my amplifier is in standby. I've set up for a 100 watt output. I'm on 14031. And what I'm going to do is use my memory keyer and the radio to do a perfect keying so that the reverse beacon network will definitely get me. I am currently on my loop, wire loop antenna. It's going to perform similar to a dipole. I've got it tuned in. We're going to go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bang this out a number of times and see who we can pick up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly change the frequency, maybe a KC or so, and change over to the hex beam and point it in whatever direction we're getting the most stations and do it a few times. And that way we can see by the frequency which one was on the loop and which one was on the hex beam. Now the loop is going to be 14031. So here we go. Let's get it going. And I'll probably edit some of this so you guys don't go through the whole long process, but you'll, you'll see everything that's happening on its way. <clears throat> okay yeah we're getting out to some places here you can see let's do, let's do it again we got quite a bunch of stations pick me up here Okay, got a, quite a few stations, picked us up, some up in Canada. I think what I'm going to do is swing the beam around. And aim for England. Since we were received over there in England, we'll start out by pointing it over, over in Europe. We'll see if we get anything more with the hex beam over towards Europe. If not, I'll swing it back over here and kind of go, uh, say, 350 degrees and see what we get in this area here. All right, that's about 45 degrees. Let's switch over to the hex beam, which will be bypassed for antenna two, which is the hex beam. 
we don't need the tuner for the 20, 20 the hex beam. Let me change the frequency to say 33. That way it'll be very clear which ones are which. This is going to be the hex beam now. Oh yeah, we just picked up a whole bunch over in Europe. Now I'm going to swing the beam about 350, see if we get any of these stations so we can do some comparisons. You can obviously see that the beam has got me overseas dramatically. Look, look at what I'm getting there that I was not getting on the wire. All this DX I was not getting on the wire. I got the one station. Now the beam I'm getting a lot of overseas DX. So let me point up here and see if we get a few of these stations. Okay, now we're just going to wait, let this completely update. We'll go see if we can find some stations between the two antennas, see what kind of signal difference. Let's see what we can do about lining up. Don't think I can sort this. Nice if you could sort it. But I can't. So let's go down here and find... Here's DF2CK. That was on the wire. Here's on the beam. It's 21 dB signal noise on the beam. He's 19. So he's 12 dB stronger. Can you see that here? Let me click on that. He's 4,981 miles. We were on the loop on 31. He's 9 dB signal to noise, right? Hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. A few moments later. Okay, it's about this time that I realize that this is very confusing to try to make sense of. And so what I did was I stopped. I. Uh, went and pulled this data into a Excel spreadsheet and I sorted it by receiving station and by frequency so that we would get all of the duplicated stations that, you know, where I had multiple, they heard me multiple times together with the time so I could see which ones were the loop, which ones were the hex beam. And this created a nice list with the signal to noise ratio. And then I realized that in some cases it looked like the hex beam was doing worse, but there was an issue there. That was because sometimes the stations were hearing me on the hex beam from the back of the beam. And so we were getting, instead of getting gain, the signal was down lower than it would normally be. So what I did is I went back and I filtered any station where the beam, you know, use, using the video, I could go back and say, okay, the beam was pointing here at this time. And it, and I went through and I took out any time that a station reported the hex beam, but they were more than 30 degrees either side of where it was pointing. Not just when it was pointing straight at it. I'm being, uh, let's say I'm leaning to the loop here, helping the loop out a little by saying, we're not only going to look at stations where we're pointing straight at them with the beam, but the drop off from the beam is not like dramatic. It's, it's noticeable, it's gonna be a few dB from directly pointing at a station 30 degrees each side. I felt that was pretty fair. So you got a 60 degree sweep there. And as long as the station reporting was within that 60 degree sweep of the hex beam, I kept it in anything that was outside of that where it was on the side or the back of the beam where it's going to be much lower, intentionally much lower with the beam, I kicked those out so that they didn't skew the our reading. And so when I did that, what I found was every case where the beam did worse than the loop, that removed them. It was always because I was pointing away from the station and that's why it was less on the hex beam, which is what you want. When you point at a station, you want to quiet everybody else down so you can hear him better. So, you know, that that's a positive thing. But by throwing those stations out, we ended up with less pairs, but we ended up with pairs where we were comparing the hex beam 
pointing at somebody roughly to the loop. And then with that data, I created a chart. So the bar chart clearly shows how the signals went. Now here's the thing, signal to noise ratio is dB. Big changes look like small changes because 3 dB sounds very little, but it's twice the signal being received. So I wanted to normalize that out so you could actually see how much percentage power difference there was being received. So what I did was I calculated that dB signal noise ratio into a relative power percentage increase. So when you look at the loop, it's always going to be 100%. And then the hex beam is going to show you the percentage compared to that 100%. If it's 3 dB, it's going to be 200% because 3 dB is double the signal. That's going to give you a realistic idea of what the signal looks like. Let me jump over to the computer and show you what we come up with. Hopefully this will be much more informative and helpful and hopefully give you a pretty good idea. So, okay, here we are. And here's the chart I created. Again, red bars are your loop antenna signals. Green is your hex beam antenna. This is the receiving stations. There's always pairs because we want to hear them both on the loop and on the, the hex beam to compare. So you can see that you've got a AC0C-1 twice. What ended up happening is either we are stronger on the hex beam or there's somewhere we're about exactly the same. Uh, I will tell you that in those where we are pretty well the same, what, what happened is this is when you were pretty well 30 degrees off one side of the beam. You weren't pointing straight at them. Uh, I didn't check each and every one, but I think there was only a couple here where they were very similar signals. I know I looked at one of them and he, he was off the beam directly enough that you know, I'm sure if I had swung the beam and pointed it at him, we would have exceeded the signal of the uh, of the loop. But anyway, this is percentage. So for example, we have a signal here that's 100% from the loop. Every loop reading will be 100%. That's our baseline. So then that station again on the hex beam is going to read out a percentage of the signal strength. And in the case of this one, it's 398%. Now, where did I get that? Well, think of it as 400 that's just rounding errors, 400%. Well, 400% is four times. How do you get four times? Well, 3 dB, 3 dB, 6 dB. So you'll find that this was 6 dB higher than this reception. So it was 400 times the signal being received. So I hope that makes sense. You can see here, this, was, this one was wild. This DF2CK was 1600% higher signal at the receiving end than the loop. Over and over again, you can see this. Here we've got one that's, you know, not a large, it's 20 26% higher. Well, you're probably gonna find that was probably one where I wasn't directly pointed at with the hex beam. I was, he was off to the side, but you know, it's still fair. Here's another 26% increase. These are the lowest. Here's another station, or here is a station that's the same. Here's one that's 26%. These percentages are gonna show up over and over again because 1 dB is a certain amount, 2 dB is a certain amount, 3 dB is a certain amount. So these numbers percentage show up over and over again. Uh, you can see a big difference here with this station, 800% change basically. So anyway, you can see just how much of an increase the hex beam give me. Now, I'm sure you realize that if you're working a pile up, you know, having a 1600% increase in your signal strength is going to definitely make you uh, much more likely to be heard and responded to. I mean, even a 600 or a 400% increase in your signal. Imagine what it would take in a linear amplifier to get a signal increase like this. You know, you've got to double your wattage to get 3 dB. 3 dB would be 200. I'm exceeding that over and over again. So if you wanted to go to 400%, you'd have to double your power output again. You're so much better off improving your antenna than you are your amp. Getting an amp and, or getting a more powerful amp, it's a dwindling payback. An antenna, a performance increase with an antenna going to a directional antenna is, is a big boom very cheaply compared. So anyway, that's something to think about. It's the old amps versus antennas. And I'm going to tell you every time, get the best antenna system you can build up first before you worry about an amp. The antenna is going to do so much more for you because if they can hear you with a big powerful amp, but your antenna is not good enough to hear them, it's useless. On the other hand, if you got the very best antenna you have and you feel like you need some more amps, then that's fine. 
Hopefully this gave you some information. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to ask uh, in the comments. Thanks for hanging in here. Hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something. But most of all, I hope to see you in the next video.